Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha TV. I am Vishal Dahiya, and this special show is based on Pandit Dindal Upadhyay, his principles, philosophies, and their relevance in today's context. The nation is commemorating the birth centenary of Pandit Dindal Upadhyay, who was one of the founders of Bharatiya Jan Sangh, which later became the Bharatiya Janata Party. He has been the source of ideological guidance and moral inspiration for BJP since its inception. He advocated the doctrine of integral humanism, which is defined as a classless, casteless, and conflict-free social order. He talks about the integration of indigenous Indian culture with the social, political, and economic fabric of the nation. He also envisaged the concept of Dharma Rajya for Indian state, which is duly oriented, uh, which is duty oriented, unlike other concepts which are rights oriented. The purpose of Upadhyay was to identify desirable goals for Indian society and the intellectual and spiritual basis for their attainment. His philosophy has remained largely undebated and for a discussion on his principles and their relevance in present day, we have with us today in the studio a panel of distinguished guests. Let me introduce you to them, starting with Professor Rajvi Sharma, uh, renowned RSS thinker. We also have with us uh, Mr. Bikranjit Banerjee, is a senior fellow of uh, Shama Prasad Mukherjee Research Foundation. And we're also joined by senior journalist uh, Mr. Yuja Chaudhary. Welcome, all of you. Let me begin with uh, you, uh, Professor Sharma. If uh, and since, I, as I have said, and I hope uh, everybody would agree that there has not been much debate and discussion on the philosophy and principles of uh, Pandit Deen Dayal Upadhyay. What or how would you define integral humanism, the main basic philosophy which he propounded? Well, uh, uh, Mr. Vishal, I think you have raised a very important question right in the very beginning as to the lack of uh, the kind of attention and research which in fact uh, was required to go into the thoughts of uh, many uh, mm -hmm. you know the heroes of uh, india including uh, pandit din dayal upadhyay i don't want to go into the reasons as to why they were neglected but uh, at the same time i think i would say that pandit din dayal upadhyay was the person who led the the kind of pathways for uh, many people to follow if we really want to succeed as a nation, mm -hmm. if we want to succeed as a democracy, mm -hmm. if we want to succeed as a society. And he believed that, uh, you know, the, the kind of ideologies that have been uh, propagated uh, globally and also in India, even after independence, he was very clear that Congress has, in fact, also has uh, brought into the fabric of the government and its philosophy the Western philosophies and the Western ideas, okay. which may not be conducive to uh, the development, real development of Indian society or, mm -hmm. or the economy. He believed that the, the society cannot be, cannot be seen in, in segments. Mm -hmm. Society cannot be seen in terms of the units mm -hmm. uh, separately from each other, mm -hmm. as uh, is the, the philosophy of uh, the, the West, like, for example, the capitalist mm -hmm. uh, ideology or the socialist ideology. He said he was not opposed to any ideology, but the fact of the matter is that no society can develop on the foundations of conflict. Okay. Uh, let, me, uh, let me bring in Banerjee out here because you made a very uh, important point. Uh, Mr. Banerjee, uh, one important point which you made is that the Western philosophy, which uh, it, was, uh, uh, it has been rather seen as being propagated by the Congress leaders post-independence, although they would contest it, uh, <coughs> that it is not uh, what they are propagating. But, uh, you know, um, the uh, research, whatever it has been done, and uh, which has been talked about, uh, Upadhyay's uh, integral humanism, he doesn't seem to be completely against the Western concepts. He seems to be talking about the amalgamation of the Western science and Western philosophy as per the Indian standards. So what is he trying to say and achieve from No, I think the crucial thing what he wants to say, and this is something which we need to discuss because this has become more and more relevant to us today, mm -hmm. is he is of the view that Western philosophy as we know it today, Western political philosophy, whether mm -hmm. it be the socialist model or whether it be the capitalist, capitalist model, model, has failed. And the communist and, model as well. And that's what socialist, communist and uh, capitalist model has failed. And he says to prosper in India, to a, for a political uh, philosophy to be applicable in India, you need it with unique Indian characteristics. Okay. And he formulated integral humanism 
as an Indian political philosophy, taking into account the huge Indian cultural background which feeds into Indian politics. Okay, let me bring in uh, Ms. Banerjee, uh, uh, Ms. Chaudhary out here. I'm sorry. Uh, the point is, uh, there is, seems to be a conflict. Uh, you know, uh, the uh, propagators of the India Lupadhyay's philosophy say that he was uh, he's been overlooked over the years, and what he's been talking about is something uh, which is integral to the Indian culture, and this is the only way which can uh, uh, put the country on the path of development. Something, a view which has been uh, uh, countered by uh, the, uh, the the other uh, thought, uh, which has been uh, led by the Congress Party since independence. Do you see a stark difference between both uh, what both are saying, or is there a meeting ground somewhere? Because uh, it's it's ultimately about uh, the development of the nation, the the uh, the propagation of Indian culture. I would say two things here. One that uh, Mr. Din Dayal Upadhyay was a mentor to a large number of BJP leaders as we have seen them evolve. Mm -hmm. uh, he was also the founder of the party. And uh, we've just, con they're concluding today the cel uh, centenary celebration of his 100 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore, and the BJP is in power, the Sangh Parivar is in power. And therefore, the, uh, you know, for the country to know what he stood for, it's a very good debate to kick, kick off. Okay. Particularly if you say that, you know, there has been a certain kind of ideological framework that has dominated our politics and society for the last many decades. Mm -hmm. Now there is a new group that has come to power. They represent new... You see, for the moment, we think of it as Hindutva. Mm -hmm. But are there other underpinnings, mm -hmm. ideological, value system-wise, of that philosophy? I think there needs to be greater debate, jo Adan Pradhan, you know, that we talk about on this and the country needs to know. Mm -hmm. As far as, uh, of course, we, po at the popular level, one identifies him as somebody who said the last man, like Gandhiji. Okay. Wipe off the tears of the last man. So whatever we do through your politics, through your governance must actually target that That's what the core of the integral humanism is. That's right. Yeah. But the integral humanism, I think, goes beyond that beyond that, that we need to understand. But I would say, you say, is there common anything common between the uh, Yeah, is there a the meeting two? ground somewhere? Meeting ground. I think there should be a meeting ground uh -huh. because uh, India has always stood for the middle path. You know, this thing that was said, let all the winds of different civilizations blow through your land and yet not be blown off. Mm -hmm. it, and you choose the best out of it. So while you attack the dialectical materialism uh, of communism or materialism of capitalism, you find your, your own essential, quintessential Indian model, which is best suited to that exercise, I think we should absolutely undertake and undertake with a completely open mind that in 2017, this is where we stand. Let's okay. look at how we are doing in all realms. Okay. Uh, Professor Sharma, uh, obviously uh, you would want to react to what Ms. Chaudhary has said, but I would like to throw in one more point about integral humanism because that is one thing which uh, uh, seems to be forming the core of his ideology. And it is being said that it's a holistic idea of human welfare, as uh, Ms. Chaudhary was also pointing out, just like what uh, Mahatma Gandhi said about the last man in the line, last man in the queue, the poorest man in the country. So is there something very different than what uh, father of the nation had said? No, I think for quite to, to, to a great extent, I think uh, uh, Pandit Din Dhyalupadhyay was also in uh, sync with what Gandhi has said. Mm -hmm. But let me, uh, let me first try to explain uh, what is integral humanism uh -huh. as we, uh, we discuss it uh, many a times. In fact, as I was saying in the very beginning, that he believed that no uh, real progress, okay. social, cultural, political, or economic, is possible by looking at it in compartments. We cannot look into political development by ignoring social development. Similarly, social development cannot take place by ignoring the other aspects. All of, of them it. are interlinked. All, all of them are interlinked. Mm -hmm. And he tried to explain it in an organic relationship, you know, and okay. uh, even the development and happiness of, a, of an individual has to be looked into holistically. For example, he said, that a man is, is in fact, is, is uh, having uh, four kind of attributes, uh, what he said, uh, man, buddhi, uh, uh, the atma, or sharir, mm -hmm. the body, mind, soul, and the, and the spirit. Mm -hmm. So uh, a, a person cannot be merely uh, made happy by, by, by feeding the needs, of the material needs, or the bodily needs of a person. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, he, he needs the satisfaction of his... Uh, 
a spiritual kind of needs. Uh, he needs uh, uh, to be to be uh, satisfied int intellectually as well. So, as if you look at the development of an individual, then it has you will have to address all these four together. You cannot say that first let us meet the the uh, physical needs, and then, then we'll take care of the other needs. Uh -huh. There's no hierarchy of needs. Okay. He said that uh, we, we cannot look into the hierarchical structures of satisfaction of the needs of the individual. We will have to take simultaneous kind of initiatives for that. Okay. And at the same time, he also said that, you know, the, the questions uh, of, there's a chitti, the consciousness, mm -hmm. national consciousness, what is being talked today as Bharat Bodh. He said the, the unity and diversity cannot be a slogan. It has to be lived. So... Feel the diversity, okay. appreciate the diversity, assimilate the diversity, and that you cannot assimilate without understanding India. And therefore, the national consciousness is one. We all are the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, not only citizens, mm -hmm. but, the, but the sons and daughters of one mother India nation. Okay. So he had a different kind of the definition even of nation. For him, nation was not merely a kind of a geography. Okay. It was not merely a political uh, group of certain people living in a certain uh, geographical territorial area. It is something beyond that. Okay. Uh, let me bring in uh, Mr. Banerjee out here. Mr. Banerjee, this seems to be a very, very, uh, you know, holistic concept and... Uh, if uh, the way uh, Professor Sharma was talking about, or we even read about uh, the integral humanism, there are several aspects to it which we find the commonality between what he said, what uh, Father of the Nation might have said, what other philosophies, as uh, Mr. Chaudhary was pointing out, that there are several meeting grounds, and there has to be several meeting grounds. But my point is, why time, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the followers believe that why the time has come now to push through with this particular ideology? Is this, is this the right opportune time uh, for pushing it through? Or has it been ignored for decades altogether and things would have been much better if it would have been adopted earlier? No, I, you know, it's very apparent to us as people who sort of believe in the political ideology is that it's always existed. Mm -hmm. It has existed and uh, the development of the BJP shows that it has followed this path and to where it is now. Mm -hmm. So it's not been, uh, not been uh, not considered by its followers. But for mainstream media purposes, for the mainstream, for the mainstream it's largely been disregarded. Okay. And that is because the mainstream media has its own orientation. Now, because of the political relevance of the BJP, it is time that that discussion happens. And only when that discussion happens actually, then there is a broad churning within the Indian society, within the political, uh, political society as well in India, to find out what is the correct path to go ahead. And we are quite convinced that Dindayalji's vision, mm -hmm. and we won't call it ideology, but a vision of the political India is perfectly correct. Though he wouldn't possibly agree with the question of political or economics or social because mm -hmm. he did not believe in, uh, in compartmentalizing. Divide, compartmentalizing. Mm -hmm. But together, the vision of India would be the perfect vision to go forward. Okay, let me bring in uh, uh, Mr. Chaudhary out here. Uh, do you agree with what uh, Mr. Banerjee is saying specifically that the ideology of uh, Deen Dayal Upadhyayji, which he terms that uh, vision, not ideology, has been overlooked for decades and it was willingly overlooked and as he's saying the time has come now for the proponents to push through the ideology so that its benefits can trickle down? I never said push through. <laughs> well, that's the way it is propagating yeah, it. I think that is I, that, that would be fair because uh, certainly we've not had discussion on Deen Dayal Upadhyay except, uh, you know, in certain contexts, uh, if Advani, uh, L.K. Advani was in power as Deputy Prime Minister, he mm -hmm. believed he, he was mentored by Deen Dayal Upadhyay, Mr. Narendra Modi, uh, looks up to so you know in that sense the Indrayal Upadhyay has had a bearing on the discussions but yes not in the way uh, possibly that you will have it today because is as I say there is a he said the political relevance of BJP is there and mm -hmm. BJP leaders are in power in, in the states as well as at the center so it will come much more into the political 
uh, discussion and put a political space and that's I, I see nothing wrong with that at all mm -hmm. that is, we, we should I mean the, these are new icons that they are bringing in we should have a look at what they stood for mm -hmm. uh, secondly I would say like for instance the holistic approach um, he was a, uh, uh, you know uh, it was mentioned earlier also that uh, opposed to certain Western concepts of democracy uh, socialism and so on now, for instance, I often think of this, you know, like it was, it has been said that he was against individualism. Okay. Hmm? Now, the whole concept of when individual rights becomes individualism, it's a very fine line. Mm -hmm. As a woman, I have a right as, an, as a woman to certain things. If you consign me, say, to the chula and say, that's your place, mm -hmm. you know. Otherwise, anything else you do will not be thinking of the family, the larger community, society, or it will become individual. I'm going to react. Mm -hmm. If you say, I have a role, don't be selfish only about yourself. Think of the larger good also. But your individual right as a human being, as a citizen, is going to be protected to be able to realize your fullest potential. Okay. So this, I say, is a very fine line very, which has to be... Very fine line which has to be uh, keep, you know, kept and, in mind. Yes, kept in mind. And through the discussions, all these things will come to the fore. Okay. Uh, let me bring in Professor Sharma here. And I guess what uh, uh, where uh, Ms. Chaudhary is left is... Uh, is, is finally attuned with the other concept uh, which was given by uh, Pandit Upadhyay, that is the Dharma Raja, as in it's, it's about duties, it's not only about rights. Uh, do you see there, 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 is, a, there is a confrontation? Mr. Chaudhary has made a very pertinent kind of an observation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I agree with her in uh, so far as the line between individual and individualism is concerned. In fact, uh, even, even uh, Pandit Dindal Upadhyay never said that individuals should have no rights. Mm -hmm. He said that, uh, you know, there's an organic relationship between individual and the society. There has to be a coordination between the common good and the individual uh, kind of goals. Mm -hmm. Individual goals uh, should be sacrificed for the sake of the social goals, the community goals, as community goals could be sacrificed for the goals of the nation. And nation is a b broader uh, part of the, of the globe, and the, uh, it is from there that Vasudev Kutumbukam, in fact, uh, uh, emanated as a philosophy of uh, or culture of uh, India and uh, he drew the inspiration from uh, such kind of cultural uh, prescriptions that we believed in Vasudev Kutumkam. We believed that uh, Sarve Bhavantu Sukhna. Mm -hmm. Now Sarve Bhavantu Sukhna cannot be realized until unless we are prepared to care for others. So there have to be some sacrifices uh, made and, in order and to And at the same time, it. I would just like to make sir uh -huh. one more uh, observation that uh, Pandit Dindwal Upadhyay was never in favor of political un un untouchability. Mm -hmm. And he was not, in fact, in favor of uh, stopping dialogue with others. Rather, you can say that when, the, uh, when in 1967, uh, the Congress was defeated in almost half of the states of the Union, uh, he was the person who said, all right, we should uh, join together. And, uh, and Jansen became a part of uh, several combinations in which even the even the opponents like communists were uh, were the part of those mm -hmm. co coalitions. They, they were coalitions at yeah, that time. So, mm -hmm. so the question of dialogue, interactions, understandings, he was not opposed to it. What he was saying is that we must Indianize the Western mm -hmm. and we must Westernize the Indian. Mm -hmm. And therefore, what is good for us, even if it is coming from outside, we should not uh, oppose that kind of a thing. But he believed that democracy cannot survive in the absence of social democracy. The until there, mm -hmm. what he talked about was that until unless you, that is what Gandhi also said. Mm -hmm. And he said until there means the person who is last in the queue must be taken care of. And therefore for that, even those who are gifted by God in terms of the richness of resources must sacrifice for the, for the common man. Okay, uh, let me uh, bring in... Uh... Uh, Mr. Banerjee again, and this time uh, on the issue of uh, the concept of Dharam Raj, as I was pointing out earlier, uh, this concept basically says that uh, it should be duty-based, not only rights-based. Now, we've seen how in politics also, uh, during the previous elections as well, there was criticism uh, from uh, the ruling party of the erstwhile ruling party on how the rights-based mechanism had been pushed through. So, is that uh, the, the, the kind of uh, uh, mechanism which uh, uh, Upadhyayji was uh, opposing when he was talking about Dharma Raj. For a second, can I? Can okay, I, yeah, please. I think the kind of dharmic state which he was talking about 
was basically the question relating to duty as well as value-based politics. Okay. That politics should not be free from values. It should be a principled kind of a politics. Okay, principle. Okay. No, I'll, I'll take the question. I think that's. I think to conflate the question of a rights-based with the entitlement-based model which the Congress had with the broad framework which sort of this government believes mm -hmm. that there should be, people should be equipped mm -hmm. and then they should be able to perform their obligations within society and participate as full participants in society mm -hmm. rather than being entitled to do so. Uh, that is, you can broadly say that sort of underpins uh, the sort of uh, ideological underpinnings of the government. But, you know, we also have to fairly take Deen Dayalji's philosophy as a broad outline. Mm -hmm. Deen Dayalji laid down the broad political outline on which policy or taking inspiration from which policy has to be framed. Now, the entire Manrega entitlement policy, which uh, the sort of uh, Congress believes in, mm -hmm. uh, is an entitlement based policy. Some part of it may be good and the government has retained parts of it. Mm -hmm. Some parts may be not so good and that will have to change. But these are governmental prerogatives and these are policy orientation. Mm -hmm. Now, how uh, we will, of course, the government has to be inspired by the vision of mm -hmm. the Indiraji, but how it actually works the policy on the ground, that will depend on the government. Okay. Vishwadri, do you agree with uh, that particular explanation of rights versus duties concept? No, rights versus duties is, is, a way, is fine. But duty is something that cannot be imposed. Mm -hmm. Duty is a, something that comes from within. Otherwise, it's a meaningless exercise. You can keep exhorting me to do duty, 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 unless I'm convinced I'm not going to be doing it. So it, it, you have to create that moral force. Mm -hmm. You have to build character. All that is there. But there is certainly no society can go forward if the citizens are not going to pay attention to duty. Okay. Now, as far as the right-based thing is concerned, I would slightly disagree with this. Mm -hmm. Because if you have a society and a country where after seven decades of governance, you still have people who don't even have that one job or that hundred rupees coming as, as a result of Manrega. Mm -hmm. Now there may be a lot of faults with the way it's implemented. Mm -hmm. Or you have tribal girls, Dalit girls, minority girls, probably the largest group of illiterate girls in the entire world, mm -hmm. even today. Mm -hmm. Then should you not think of right to education? Okay. If your state has provided this, has moved, you know, meaningfully to provide this, I would say forget entitlement and rights. Okay. But till it does, surely these people, you know, if we are to reach Antio there, these people have to be given their basic rights. You have to ensure that either this way or that way. You cannot have, you know, as they say, an India and a large, vast Bharat below it. Okay, uh, we're running short of time. Let's take one quick comment and concluding one, uh, starting from uh, Professor Rajvira. Neoliberalism age, this is what uh, it is being talked about. And uh, how do you uh, look at uh, the achievables with respect to the philosophy, vision, of uh, Pani Deen Dayal Upadhyay? I think this is, uh, Pani Deen Dayal Upadhyay is the only answer to, uh, to the, uh, the scene emerging out of the neoliberalism. Mm -hmm. And he believed that somewhere you have to work uh, for the welfare of those who are, who have been deprived or who have been exploited or who doesn't have the opportunity to grow mm -hmm. with the, maybe with the, with the help of the state, but at the same time, there must be some kind of the freedom decentralization of power, both socially, economically, and, uh, and otherwise. Unless we decentralize, and unless we, we proceed on Swadeshi, Swadeshi does not mean merely our goods. Make in India is a part of Swadeshi. Mm -hmm. So therefore, let us adopt certain values which promote these, the Indian interest. Integration in a, in of the in Indian interest along with modern in a, in technology. A, yeah, in a commutative way. OK. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Banerjee? No, uh, you know, I think Dindayalji a number of times said that you can't get rid of the past. We mm -hmm. are all inheritors of the past. And, you know, we have to take into account what is happening. But he was against the rampant individualism which underpins new liberalism. And to that extent, there is a clear, clear line drawn. Okay, Ms. Chaudhary, uh, final 30 seconds. Do you, do you believe this happening in this particular age? I think, you know, the most relevant things that, the thing that he has said is on Antyodai. Mm hmm and I think, as I said earlier, if 70 years down the line, more than 70 years down the line, we still have not been able to do that, then shame on us. Then we've got to think afresh, and I'm all for, you know, 
opening up, as they say, the Pandora's box and looking at why have we not done and it. And starting from the scratch. So clearly it seems uh, Pandit Deendayal Upadhyay's philosophy and vision of uh, Antyodhya, of integral humanism and Dharm Raja are concepts which, if imbibed properly and integrated properly with our values, with our cultures and with our needs in this neoliberal era, we should be able to achieve what we are missing at this point in time. We'll come back again with a different topic and different sets of guests. Till then, keep watching Rajasabha Television.